Good morning and welcome to Scotland for live coverage of the 2017 Total BWF World Championships. I'm Bobby Griffin and you join us in Glasgow at the Emirates Arena, the same venue used to host the 2014 Commonwealth Games to bring you day three of World Championships action. Some 356 players drawn to this major event from all over the globe, represented by 43 different nations converging here for these seven days in the regular straight knockout format of the World Championships. Well, we kick things off with six fantastic matches ahead of us. The first of which is men's doubles and features the world's number ones from China, Li Junhui and Liu Yuchen. They're up against an Indonesian pair that includes a former double world champion, Mohamed Asan. He's with Rian Agung Saputro. Our second men's doubles features the Olympic bronze medalists from England, the number 14 seed, Marcus Ellis and Chris Langridge. Up against a pair we watched on opening day from Austria, Dominic Stipsitz and Roman Zernwald. And we've got more English doubles in our next match, Lauren Smith and Sarah Walker have their work cut out for them. They're facing the number five seeds and Olympic semi-finalists, Jung Kyung Yun and Shin Seung Chan. Men's singles action seeds, that's the number eight seed. And the man in form, India's cream of the crop, Kadambi Srikanth, he's matched up against the Frenchman, Lucas Corvey. Let's see if he can take some confidence from watching his teammate Bryce Levedez coming through that incredible match yesterday against Lee Chong Wei. And we've got more men's doubles with the Olympic silver medalists Go and Tan of Malaysia. They're taking on the Korean pair Chung Yu Suk and Kim Duk Young. And then in the men's singles, we feature the man, the legend, the one and only Super Dan, Lin Dan of China. He's up against Denmark's Emil Holst. So our first match up in the men's doubles, let's take a look at this section of the draw. It's a tough draw throughout the men's doubles this year. This section features a potential matchup in round three against Matthias Christiansen and David de Gord if things go their way later today. Well, I'm very pleased to be welcomed in the commentary box once again by Steen Pedersen, a former head coach of the Danish national team. Steen, what are your expectations for today? We've got some tremendous matchups ahead of us. Yeah, we start off with a very, very good match here. I hope um, two really good pairs. And uh, of course, I look very much forward to watching Emil Holst later on today. Let's see if the Dane once again can get the better of Lin Dan as he got Salamat in Baggy. German Open earlier this year. That's going to be interesting. Salamat Baggy. Well, absolutely Miao. right, but let's focus Miao. right now on this opening match in the men's doubles. We've got the number right, one we seed. Have red or black. Red. It's red. You take the service. Who serves first? You serve first. They've taken service. This side. Lee, all right. OK, good. Well, the all-important toss of the coin. It looks like the Chinese pair will start the match nearest us at the bottom of your screens at home. And it's going to be China with the opening serve. Let's take a look in a moment at our two pairs in this match. First up, Liu Yu Chen, the 22-year-old from Beijing in China. Well, and what can we say about these two at the moment? An incredible year for them. They're ranked at number one in the world. Naturally, they're the number one seat here at the World Championships. And they're fresh off the back of some incredible performances that we'll talk about in a while. We've got his partner, Li Chunhui. Also 22 years of age from Liangning in China. Two of the tallest men's doubles players we've ever seen really come out of China and perhaps a significant advantage in that attacking style they've got from the back of the court. 
Well, today they're up against the Indonesians. A new, fairly new pairing, Mohamed Asan and his partner, Rian Agung Saputro, 27 years of age, from Karanganyar in Indonesia. Currently ranked number 30 in the world. He's been up as high as number seven in the past with a previous partner, Pratsama. Today he's playing with a very experienced partner indeed, Mohamed Asan, a 29-year-old from Palambang in Indonesia. Ready to play. Double world champion with his former partner, Hendry Setiawan. Well, Asan and Saputro came through in fine style in round one against Idstedt and Nico Rupanen from Sweden in just 40 minutes. But it's the Chinese that lead that head-to-head -head matchup. They've only met once before in international competition. They lead that head-to-head 1-0. -head that was the Singapore Open just a few months ago. Straight games for the Chinese, 21-13, 21-15. So our umpire for today's proceedings, Bert van Horenbeek from Belgium. He's supported by his service judge from Vietnam, Nguyen Pham Duan. And Steen, what do you make Ladies and gentlemen, of this very strong Chinese right, pair? They're having Li an Jun incredible Yui, year. Yu Yu Chen, yeah, China. And on my left, seats. Mohamed Hassan, uh, Rian Agun, Saputro, here, but, Indonesia. Uh, how will they react to that um, pressure that Rian comes Agun with the top seats? To it's going to be interesting to see what Lovo. Indonesians can do Play. here. Well, good opening One serve, long. return out the back. We saw some elements of drift in this arena, but not so many at this particular end of the courts. The drift some of the players have been talking about from top to bottom, so to speak. More going out the back of the court at the far end, the top of your screens. But who knows, such a big arena, we wonder whether things have changed around today. Great rally here, some great mid-court driving. Oh, I see that bit of skill, Steen from Mohamed Hassan. The trick shot already, he's looking confident. Two, love. Good pressure from Mohamed Asan, that smash into the body of Liu Yu Chen and the follow-up forehand kill. Yes. So, reigning world champion Mohamed Asan with uh, his former partner, Mr. Oh. Chen. Split up after the Olympics. Uh, the Olympics. Asia and uh, Rio. I wonder why that is, Steen. Do you, uh, I don't suppose you have any inside knowledge. Those two are very formidable pair, very successful pair. Yeah, I, I, I have no uh, direct answer to that. Speculate a little bit. Uh, Hendra Sechewan has uh, gone independent and is now playing with the uh, Malaysian uh, Tempung Hyung. So, uh, uh, Hendra Sechewan, former world champion with uh, his Kido as well, and former Olympic champion in 2008 with Marcus Kido. So, uh, 
bit more experience, but also a little bit older than uh, Muhammad Hassan. Well, Yu Chen there with the oh. arrow on serve, feeling some pressure from Nagumsa Putro, perhaps, at the start of this match. A few nerves, of course, first match out on court. And the number one seeds would have had a bye, I assume, Steve, in the opening round. If yeah, they had. Draw. So this is their first match in this tournament. And, um, Four for five. and um, could be a little bit of a, a setback because you'd like to be as adapted as possible when you play position of this level here because there's no doubt that they can play the Indonesian so it's it's um it's a, a little bit of a dangerous match it's not the ones you want to see come out of in, in, in the draw in, in the first round and we've been, yes, we've been, uh, easier to move but on the other hand if you win it then you're sort of uh, already in gear and and can just um, move on in the tournament. Oh, look at that attacking from the Indonesian team. Some impressive jump smashing. He must have been two or three feet in the air. And coaches looking animated at the moment. Certainly not a relaxing start to the tournament for the Chinese, like you said, Steen. Not really the pair you'd be looking to meet in your opening match. Mohamed Hassan, in particular, former well, double world champion, current world champion in men's doubles, but with a different partner. Still fierce opposition. through a, a very nice development uh, Lee and, and Liu throughout this year we've seen them uh, lose the final in Singapore open to uh, the uh, second seeded um, Danes Bo and uh, Morgensen and then they a repeat of that match in the Indonesia open and coming up uh, as winners there so uh, it seems that they're learning uh, all the time and of course you would expect that them being a young pair, I think if they can survive this first hurdle here, they're, they're going to be really, really strong contenders. Uh, I think it should be a uh, stadium and arena that suits them well. Very powerful, the two tall Chinese players. Yeah, absolutely. This particular year in the World Champs, we've got a changing of a few former strong pairs. Zhang Nan with a different partner oh. in China, for example. So it's for cold. Nine, seven. No. Saputro struck above the waist. Yeah, I tend to agree with the uh, service judge. Return of serve from Saputro catching the top of the net. Picked up from the Chinese. Indonesians still on the attack. Great rally, but also a sign of. Um, oh, he changed his mind. Great save. That's good. Yeah, well played, Indonesia. Staying focused. But also, um, also a sign that. Um, Eight, nine. As the players would say, it's a little bit of a, of a slow haul means that um, it's not easy to kill the attack and you have to be willing to work a lot and I think eventually that should favor uh, amongst others the Chinese here because they've got some very very powerful smashes. Let's see how it all pans out. Good 
defense by Saputra. Yeah, great power from Liu Yu Chen, but fantastic Whoa. defending from the Indonesians who come out on top. The error at the net from Yu Chen. Nine all. It's been a while since we've um, sort of uh, praised the Indonesians for their great defensive skills in, in men's doubles. Uh, they relied a lot on the service situation and the attack, but we've seen some great defense by them here. And of course, a little bit of a slow hole also helps the ones that perhaps doesn't have that strong defense. It gets a little bit better in uh, conditions like this. Yeah, we're certainly seeing a few more rallies of length than perhaps some top men's doubles. So much won and lost in the first few shots, return of serve in the midcourt. We're seeing a few more lifts here, Steen, and some more attacking from the back. Serve, serve, it's a full shot there from um, Mohamed Hassan. Oh. Yeah, what a backhand. Yeah. Takes it so high and has both straight and cross possibilities. Oy! Difficult to cover for a uh, oh! interval. Well, not much in this opening game at this stage. The Chinese marginally ahead. The Junhui, the Yu Chen ahead, 11 10 at the mid game interval. Indonesian coach Harry Pamadi, probably the most experienced men's doubles coach in the world right now. Yeah, we're starting to see, to see that talent come back into Indonesian men's doubles. The All England winners, for example, what an exciting young pair they are to watch. Powerful, powerful attack from Lee Jun Kui. Immediate well, praise from the coaches, apparently something that they discussed in, uh, yeah, in the interval. I noted that uh, they were talking very, very much the centre line there. Let's see if that's something they continue to do. Sam once more trying to take them on at the net, but forced to lift. And a smash ten. right into the body once more of Saputro. Check from uh, Saputro. Yeah, that would have been great from Jun Hui if he'd have managed to get the second one. First one through the legs, the second one round the back. That would have been something special if that had come back. wide and there's still just that one point splitting the difference between these two men's doubles pairs round two I get the feeling Steen this opening game is going to be all important in this match yeah I, I, um, <clears throat> I think it's going to be really really crucial for the Indonesians I think if the Indonesians can win this opening game and put pressure on the Chinese player they have a chance on the other hand, I have a feeling that if the Chinese first get comfortable here and get a first game in the back, then um, they might run away with it in the second game. But uh, who knows? Come with uh, 13, lots of predictions 14. before that have uh, proven to be wrong. 
Uh, well, we've, we've all done that. Yesterday was something special in the men's singles, for example. Oh, around the back once more from our Gunta Putro. The great follow-up from Jun Hui. Yeah, I think again the Chinese pair cleverly uh, directs the first one or two smashes at the uh, center line, makes it a little bit easier for the net player to intercept. And if they move forward to a really good position, then they can be a little bit uh, more free in their shot choice. A little teaser from uh, Mohamed Hassan there, who made gestures as if he was going to return that shot, even though he never meant to do it. Yeah, Def absolutely. Clearly, clearly got too much power from the Chinese. Yeah, it was great power 16, from the original smash 14. from Hassan. The third shot directed towards the centre line feels they have the uh, upper hand in flat game power. how much Mohamed Hassan is able to uh, bend his back. Look at that. Place forehand shots. Even though the, uh, the shuttle is over his left shoulder. Quite fun as well. Both is a role model to uh, learn from in uh, former Olympic champion and world champion Tony Konovan, now representing the USA. Yeah, great flexibility needed to play men's doubles at this level. Service over. 16, 18. Pamadi with some advice here in the final stages of the first game. Okay. That question from um, Just taking a look at the back of the shirts, Steen, the Chinese pair. I wonder if you know the answer to this. There's five stars above their names there. Um, very relevant in football, in soccer, of course, with medal wins, but um, do you know the significance of that? Um, no, I'm not totally sure, so I'll, I'll refrain from um, from um, guessing at it. Well, I wonder if I can try and find out during the day. Anybody watching at home, of course, get involved on social media. Sets up three game points that led a shot there from the Indonesians. Three game points for Lee and Liu. Yeah, Junhui with the serve then. Game point 2017 for the Chinese. Serve is over. 18 20. Saputro taking his time to 
Change the shuttle. The Indonesian still looking relaxed. Game point down. They've been here many times before, not phased by the chance of losing. Oh, you missed that one. Well, a chance for the Chinese 19, to kill off this 20. opening game, but a miss hit. That was a big, big opportunity. Think of what we said about drift in the hall and playing the first match and timing. It could be crucial. No. Well, that drive's gone wide, and it's the Chinese that take the opener. Li Junhui and Liu Yu Chen come through this first game. 21-19. So the Indonesians with very much an uphill battle now, trailing the world number ones from China. One game in this second round match of the World Championships. Great attacking though. That smash across court from Asan. So far in the first game went the Chinese way. They sort of grinded their way to three match point, had a miss hit, but uh, was freed by um, the third match point and, and got uh, the game point and, and, and got the game. But the interesting part now is um, how will the change of ends affect um, the game? The Indonesians should have a little bit more help in the attack, a little bit more fierce attack from this side, and it will be easier for the Chinese to, to control their defense, but um, maybe um, getting long enough defense could be the, um, the challenge for them. from the Chinese, but in the end, Jun Hui leaves one that falls in. Yeah, I think he touches it. Yes. I think he sort of, yeah, touches ah, it here, yes. and that's why, and he's a little bit sad, because I, I think he believes that it would have gone long had he got his racket out of the way. Played by uh, Saputro. Three, Chen. Two. Trapped himself there, pushing that one. That's not a good choice against an Indonesian men's doubles. If you can't play it downwards, 
really, really dangerous. Yeah, it's gone long. Service over. Yeah, interesting, Steam. We were talking yesterday oh. about heights of serve, but also the difference that has perhaps on a very tall player like either of the Chinese compared to a shorter player like the Indonesians. Yeah. Would you argue they have the advantage in defense? In that case, Steen, the Four, Indonesians being closer three. to the ground, lower center of gravity. Um, yeah, not, not necessarily this particular pair, but, but in general, um, uh, not so tall players, I think, um, tend to, uh, it's maybe it's because they develop more defensive shots. Of course, if you're 190 plus, then you will obviously try to smash a lot and get great angles on the top. Then White, this would have taken it. Chose to play on. Good rally for the Indonesians. Yeah, fantastic follow-up, finding spaces past the attacking Chinese in the end. That was the sign that might not be so easy for the Chinese to kill their attack on this side here. I must admit, I didn't pay any attention as to whether they still targeted the center line. Three. Asan just caught in two minds as to what he was trying to do with that shot. Good smash accuracy on the right hip. Seven four. Difficult to defend. He wanted to defend that backhand and had to be forced to try and take it late on the forehand. What a rally. Smashing defense turned back into attack. Mid court drives. Has to be the longest rally of the match so far, Steen. But, I mean, when Lee Jun Hui, when he's clearing from the back court a single shot, then it's a rather slow. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, what defense from Indonesia, the rally's still going. Yeah. Oh, this is incredible. How is this rally it's still going? It's, oh, it's gone wide, it's gone long. Challenge. Muhammad Hassan challenges. Confident call from the line judge, however. Yeah, and we could see that uh, Zhang Jun, Chinese head coach, was starting to talk to his players because uh, this this needs some some tweaking. Well, let's see what Hawkeye can show us. And yes, clearly two or three inches Challenge long of that back line. Service over five seven. I don't think any of these pairs are are used to playing that long rallies. The Chinese with the Strong attack, um, not used to the right position back. getting that much back at them, and the Indonesians relying a lot on service situation and attack as well. I'm not used to to long rallies either, so it's going to be interesting to see how each pair reacts to this. Um, I would tend to give a little advantage to the Indonesians in terms of front court game and um, 
and general uh, you uh, vision and creativity. You. Yeah. So, will they just continue to attack Li and Liu, or will they play uh, a little bit more patient but still maintain the control of the rally? Yeah, fascinating prospects, that rally, the previous point, 85 shots in the top of the men's doubles game, that's very rare to see. It might be the longest rally all year in men's doubles. Oh, through the legs, but it's gone wide. Save is over. Excellent. Reactions by uh, Mohamed Hassan. That's a couple All times right. we've seen from the Indonesian you talk to service fault. All right. He called this. It means too high. Umpire yeah. clearly yeah. there's confirming. Yeah. The shuttle was struck above the waist. Oh, that's close, Dean. Service yeah, over. Close. Seven, eight. There's one thing you heard Bert van Horenbeek say to <clears throat> Mohamed Hassan that he should talk to him and not the service judge. Should not influence the service judge. It clearly shows with hand signals what the fault is. Apparently, it seems that no player service is aware over. of these hand signals because Nine, everybody's seven. asking. I like that drop shot. Yeah, the lift was short and put away very confidently, Mohamed Hassan. Hey. Hey. For so much of this match through game one and game two, Indonesians trailing by one or two points. Working so hard to try and get a lead in this second oh. game. Service over. Up by two. Let's see if they can try and maintain that lead this Eight, time. Nine. And they haven't stopped smashing the Chinese pair, and I, I like that because it shows great attitude. It puts some mental pressure on the opposition team. We could, we're just going to go on. We have plenty of stamina, lots of uh, power ready for you. Service over. Ten, eight. Oh, that's a great return of serve. That set up the attack for Indonesia. Ooh, he missed that. Well, Yu Chen, what do you think, Steen? He was a little too close to the net, wasn't he? Very difficult to control the pace of the returning drives from Asan. And Indonesia finally have a lead enough to give them some confidence in game two. They're ahead 11 8. I'm coaching this one because the development in the first part of the second game here also puts into perspective the things that happened in the first game. Now that they've changed ends, we've seen that it's not so easy to play on the far side of the court. And uh, the Indonesian still got to 19 in the first game, so if they can uh, continue the way they played here in the second game, suddenly um, it seems like they stand a good chance. Yeah, absolutely, Steen. I was with you thinking that if the Chinese had won the opening game, they would be looking pretty dominant through the rest of this second game. But it's not to be. Indonesians having a much more positive time at this end of the court. There was the drop shot from Li Junhui. Clever. Saw it from the Indonesians earlier in this second game. Playing the drop shot once in a while to get the opposition out of position.
Yeah, it's that variation in men's doubles. You kind of get used to the pace of the shuttle and it's relentless smashing. Yeah, and also the shuttle, when, when you play long rallies here, they tend to get a little bit fluffy. That means the uh, feathers are not exactly uh, straight. And that slows the shuttle down a little bit. Oh, great defense first from Excellent. Indonesia, then China, and then Indonesia retain attack. Look at that. Um, 12, 9. That last reverse slice from uh, Mohamed Astan at the net. Okay. Here it comes. Twist the grip. It will twist the grip, but it's the racket hit that uh, it makes some impact on the arm, and the racket shows that it's going to be a cross shot, but uh, actually, it is a straight one. Yeah, terrific skill, seeing him be able to rush across the shuttle at the last moment. Chinese, it seems, happy to try to tire the Indonesians. Lifting more than perhaps you'd expect in this rally. And now they're on the attack themselves. Fantastic rally in this match. Another rally that's a lot longer than we're used to seeing in men's doubles at this high level. And that kill shot at the end, that drive into the body. Very effective. I can tell you there's some men's doubles players that either are watching or being told about this match here. And uh, I think for Saputra and... Uh, Sun. The conditions here, they give them a uh, reasonable chance against the Indonesia, but it's, in my opinion, bad news for another pair of the favourites, the Indonesians. Uh, Marcus uh, Gideon and uh, Kevin Tsukamulio. It's a challenge. Yu Yu Chen challenges. Well, you can hear the heartbeat of the Hawkeye Challenge system. Confirmed there by the Hawkeye Plum on the line. Unsuccessful, one challenge remaining. Challenge unsuccessful, and Indonesia now lead 14, by four 10. points. That might be a Blink. crucial part of this second game. That lead of four, we haven't seen either pair ahead by so much throughout this game to this point. Biggest lead there has been 11, at any time in the match. 14. A close first game. Steen, you were saying a moment ago, you think it might be bad news also for Kevin Gideon and Marcus. Uh, Marcus Gideon and Kevin Sukumolio. Yeah, I mean, we shouldn't rule them out. There's no reason to, to go back to Indonesia, but, um, but it, it makes their their challenge for the world title a little bit more difficult, in my opinion, because um, they like a fast-paced um, playing style and um, like to attack. And, and here it seems like a, a lot of the attack is, is um, neutralized, so it's going to be really interesting following them in, in the tournament. 
Tried some deception, Mohamed Hassan just brushed across the shuttle with a touch of slice on this drop shot. Things up, dragged it wide. And China back to within two points. I'm getting a feeling that there might be a little bit more drift than we've seen. That we've noticed the first two days. Yeah, he had to drop his racket head just below that tape. Drive. Important point there. Service over. 16-14. Oh, great pressure from the Indonesians once more. Service over. 15, 16. Snake from uh, Saputra. Clearly not as experienced as uh, his partner, the son. Maybe it would be an idea for the Chinese Four. player to direct Service the majority over. of the shots at uh, Saputra here at this time. Yeah, we saw quite a few 15. of the smashes from the Chinese in the opening game directed into the body of Saputro with a lot of success. He took quite a few on the legs and waist. They've had, well, some mixed results, really, Saputro and Hassan so far since they started playing together. They do have a win under their belts, that China International Challenge at the start of the year. Is it simply a case, you think, Steen, of, of the new pairing, you know, the communication, trying to get used to playing with a new partner? Um, it, it could very well be. Um, but it's also, I mean, Saputra has played reasonably with other partners, Bernard Griovan and uh, Anka Pratama. Uh, to see if he's the caliber that uh, can uh, go to finals in the uh, Premier Series and so on. He's yet to show that, in my opinion. Yeah, notice how Asan here shapes to cover the cross drive and then comes back. Thank you. Perhaps that indecision was what cost them the point. They still have this two-point lead, however. Hassan and Saputro of Indonesia. by Mohamed Hassan. Great variation. 19-16. Switches from side to side. The body of um, Liu Chen. Thank you. 
Four match point, uh, four game points here for Saputro and uh, Mohamed Hassan. Played a great second game and uh, neutralized the strong attack of uh, Liu and Lee. That one was too short. Yeah, well left. Great judgment. Three more game points to the Indonesians. And a great second game for them. Oh, oh this hit off the strings, perhaps off the frame of Hassan. And there it is. That error gives the second game to the Indonesians. We're going to three. Mohamed Hassan and Saputra have turned things around in this match. Such an intriguing battle out here. Third and deciding final game coming up. Hassan and Saputra taking that one, 21-18. Well, something we can tell you. The winners of the match we're watching here. Steen, good news for you from Denmark, Matthias Christiansen and David Dugor. Dugor, apologies for the pronunciation, but they've made it through their match and they will face the winners of this match in the next round. I think whoever they're going to face here is going to be a tough opposition for the Danes. The Indonesian coach has just gone to talk to one of the team officials in the stands. Maybe something about uh, fluid. Maybe he needs water or a sports drink. It could also be a small injury. Or, you know, Well, the first two rallies going the way of the Chinese, some fierce attacking. It does seem, as you said earlier, Steve, it's perhaps a little easier to attack from this end of the court, from the bottom of the screen, because you can use that extra drift to generate slightly uh, a bit more pace on the shuttle. Yeah. Looking at court there from uh, Hassan. And it's going to be so exciting, this uh, third game, because what are they going to do? It's, it's not like they're going to replay first and second game. The, the, both sides are going to come up with a, with a better plan now, because the Indonesians know how it's like to, to play on that side, and, and they want to get as many points as possible. And of course, the Chinese will look to uh, get a big lead if they can. Oh, it's way too high. Excellent. Excellent alertness by... Rian Agung Saputro. Yeah, again, that backhand. He used a similar sort of shot, brushing yeah. across the shuttle to turn it straight. Very clever 
play, waiting for his opponent to make a move and then finding the open space. And this is where it becomes um, a little bit um, critical for the Chinese pair because, I mean, they are still young. Um, they are the top seeds and they're in uh, a little bit of dire straits right now. I think Mohamed Hassan is going to get um, overly nervous. On the contrary, I think he thrives on situations like this. Great rotation from the Indonesians. Oh, what a finish. Sam, one of the quickest players around the court in the men's doubles game, and he was showing us why in that previous rally. Liu uh, Chen doesn't want to change the shuttle. And that's because it's up for the opponents on the other side to kill it if it's um, a little bit fluffy. Yeah, that's right. Perhaps less chance of their lifts and clears if they play them going out of the back. The shuttle's just a touch slower. Oh. Great pickup from Yu Chen. Another one of those long rallies, and it stayed in from Zaputro. Satisfied the uh, Indonesian coach, Harry Pamadi. Well, they're doing that job, you said, Steen, the Indonesians. Somehow, Lee, staying on the attack and winning more of the points in attack from the what we might call the bad end of the court in that particular scenario. And this here, this is the solution for the Chinese pair. Direct the service return uh, with the third shot to Riena Gung Saputra take their chances there. Asan is playing a fabulous match right now and, and uh, he could win the match for Indonesia in my opinion. Six, five. I'm not certain that the Chinese will eventually come out on top, even if they target Saputra, but I think that's the best chance right now. Well, look at that attacking. What incredible both rotation and power. Seven, five. Very good at covering the court, but they also, right now, they are attacking from the middle of the court so they're so good at um, getting the uh, for them right uh, attacking chances so Pucho and Hassan it's gone wide uh, gone long sorry and I think from now on Liu Chen he will get more and more uh, tense and uh, frustrated yeah, this must give the Indonesians huge amount of confidence because both pairs have found it more difficult at that far end of the court, top of the screen, and yet the momentum certainly with Indonesia at this stage from that end. They'd be looking forward to changing ends, team. He's defending himself well, Saputo. They're, they're playing a brilliant game right now, the two Indonesians. Hassan trying to go over the top. The rally continues. Oh, thank 
fantastic rally. Excellent badminton we are watching here. Service over. On day three of the World Championships in Glasgow. Well, whatever it is, the conditions, the speed of the shuttle, but it's Six, providing eight. a fantastic springboard for some great men's doubles. They're ready. Mohammed. Once more, Saputro could not control the forehand. Seven. Well, this eight. one might just go right down to the wire. Initially, Saputro again inside the court, hitting down, but the Chinese defence standing up to that. Round the back from Saputro, but a great follow-up from Yu Chen. Yeah, that will be a let. Saputro clearly yeah. not yet ready to receive serve. Excellent flat shot. Fantastic shot by Mohamed Hassan. Serve is over. Nine, eight. He strikes the shuttle so clean, doesn't he? Short swing, fantastic technique. Judgment from Jun Hui, just aware enough to leave that previous serve. And from a great start from the Indonesians, they're now one point behind. We're getting close to the mid game interval, close to that change of ends. It's in from Zaputro, the backhand, very instinctive, great reactions. And it's the Indonesians just managed to stay ahead, 11-10 at the break. We're going to see a change of ends and it might just be crucial to decide the outcome of this match. Nolopin lagi ke sebelah sininya yang uh, uh, apa namanya tuh sana tus tus kasih ke banyak kebaikannya sana ya kadang-kadang kalau lagi posisi kalah itu kan berani jangan dorong panjang kenapa dia pasti baliknya lurus lagi ya kan? 
Well, the change of ends. Saputro for Indonesia in red with the serve at the bottom of our screens. Hey! That's a challenge. Mohamed Hassan challenges called out. Yeah, called out. Another very quick decision from the line judge. Fortunately, we have Hawkeye in place at such events to help confirm these matters for us. And the result of that challenge is... It's in. Correction in. Well, what a time to find the line for Indonesia. We saw some crucial challenges yesterday, Steen. We saw some very close decisions. The Indonesians on arguably the faster end attacking wise. Excellent play. Hold long, but uh, challenged by Liu Chen. Well, first two rallies after the change of ends here in the third game, both coming down to what the result of Hawkeye can tell us. Defensive lift from the Chinese, and it's clearly challenge long, and One challenge the Indonesians remaining. with a three-point lead. Just saw Yu Chen asking for the shuttle to be changed. Steen, no surprise, really. He's hoping to keep this shuttle fresh, keep it as fast as possible. Yeah, uh, looking uh, difficult right now for the Chinese pair because uh, both the Indonesians are playing well, and Asan is playing totally as in his heydays with uh, Hendra Sechuan. Four point cushion now. Yeah, Asan looking frustrated, disappointed with his choice there. He has perhaps ambitiously trying to take on that deceptive forehand. Great return of serve. Oh, how did he get that? Amazing defense. Yeah, and again, the Chinese picking it up almost from the floor. That's a fantastic save by the Chinese player, especially Liu Chen. It was almost at the service line, Saputra, when he launched his first smash. Yeah, and that could be crucial, Steen. A lead of four points for the Indonesians would have really given them a massive amount of confidence at this stage in the game, but China still within touching distance. Smash there. Over. Absolutely not. 13-15. Yeah, power and accuracy straight on to the right hip. 
And, and when the tension um, when it gets close in the deciding game, it, it still is an advantage to attack, in my opinion. We don't have that um, to use those fine motor skills in the defense. You can sort of let the power free and just uh, give everything in your smashes. It becomes more difficult to play a good defense. So it's uh, easier to just wind up and hit the shuttle than it is to try to play with control. 16, 14. kill for Saputro, the Indonesian still two points in front. Now back to one and a bit more momentum going the way of the Chinese now. It's been a couple of mistakes for my son, he really wants this winner. That was another loose shot from Hassan. That one. The Chinese pair have leveled the score. Well, the Chinese doing well there to get back into this game. We were potentially looking at something of an upset. We might still be, I mean, the year these two Chinese men have had and being seeded and ranked number one. defense from Saputra, but also an absolutely marvelous save from uh, Liu Chen. 18, 16. Well, really is intriguing stuff here in the men's doubles. We're only at round two. It's in fact right. the Chinese first match in the tournament, and what a way to begin the World Championships. And I must say that when Looking at the draw, we identified the matches at this stage here. This was one of them. This was where we saw some possibilities. And now we are right where we had an idea that we could be. Well, what defense. Yeah, it's the same defense again. Unbelievable mid-court pressure. And every time yeah. Indonesia kept finding a way to get the shuttle back, that cross-court drive. Making the difference. 19, Indonesia three points ahead, needing just two to knock out the number one seeds, the world number one pair from China. Turn of Serstein, a lot of skill in that forehand. Service over 17 19. This is incredible stuff for Indonesia. We're well over an hour match point 17. into this match. And the number one seeds, the ranked number one pair in the world from China, might be going out of the World Championships. Great net shot, Saputro. Well, another fantastic rally, and it's... Well, trying to hang on for one more moment. 
one match point saved by the Chinese. They face two more. And with the luck of the net cord, Mohamed Hassan and Rian Agum Saputro have knocked out the world number one pair, the ranked number one seeds from China. Li Junhui and Liu Yu Chen are out of the world championships. And what a performance, Steen, from the Indonesians. Match won by Excellent match. Man of the match here. His arms in the air. Mohamed Hassan. Well, it's fantastic to see Mohamed Hassan with his partner playing some of the best men's doubles we've seen. They've come through in round two to find a place into round three this week in three games. 19-21, 21-18, Well, this is what we've all come here to witness, matches like this. We didn't expect it in the opening rounds, but what a performance. Let's take a look at some of that action from that they tremendous go. men's doubles match. Already tremendous action here, day three of the World Championships. We're right next door to Celtic Park, home of Celtic Football Club. Well, they need some congratulations too, making it into the Champions League group stages last night with that 8-4 aggregate win in Kazakhstan. But enough football, we've got plenty of badminton here. Coverage of the World Championships. What a match in the men's doubles. Asan Saputro knocking out the number one seeds. We've got more men's doubles up next the olympic bronze medalists marcus ellis and chris langridge they're up against the austrians stipsitz and zernwald well we'll be watching what happens in this particular section of the draw all day today go and tan featured later against korea right now we've got ellis and langridge and, well, you can see there, Asan Saputro making it through to round three. They're going to face Christiansen and Dugor of Denmark. Such a tough half of the draw in the men's doubles.